Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the normal distribution in context. So the majority of questions that you're going to get are going to be in a situation where uh, we're talking about a contextualized problem so that we have got to interpret what we need to find. So the weights of male golden retrievers uh, when they are fully grown is known to be normally distributed with a mean weight of 32 kilos and variance of 1.21 kilos. A golden retriever is selected at random. Find the probability that they weigh these questions. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to call the weights x and identify the key features of uh, what is t we're told here. So we're told that it's normally distributed. We know the mean weight is 32. And we're told the variance is 1.21. Now, we know that the variance isn't something that we um, have been using much. We use a standard deviation. So really, we want to square root 1.21. And the square root of 1.21 is 1.1. So the standard deviation is 1.1, whereas the variance is 1.1 squared, 1.21. So a little thing to keep an eye on there, just uh, in case you get caught out. So we want to find the probability that uh, the dog weighs less than 31 kilos. OK, so for this first problem, so I'm not going to convert these ones to Z um, because we just want to practice getting our calculator uh, bits right. OK, um, so I'm not going to convert all these to Z as we did in the previous uh, couple of videos. So. Uh, I'm going to go straight to trying to find the property straight off the bat, OK? So we want to find the property that uh, x is less than 31 here. That's what it's asking us. OK, so on our calculator, we go to menu and then number 7 and then normal CD. So the lower value is far enough down, OK? So 10 lots the standard deviation would be 11. So that would take us down to 21. So long as we choose a number that's far enough down, I could use 0 if I wanted to. I'm going to use 0 as my lower. The upper can be the 31. The sigma is 1.1. And the mean is 32. So just use a lower that's far enough down, OK? So I get 0 0.1817 to four decimal places. Don't get stuck up on that which figure you're using as the lower here, so long as it is far enough away. Okay. So 0 0.1817 is the probability for the first one. So now I want to find the probability of getting more than 32.5. So the probability that x is greater than 32.5 kilos. OK. These are quite heavy dogs. Right, so my mean was 32. 32.5 can be there. And I want to find that area. OK. So on normal CD, my lower this time is going to be the 32.5. The upper value is just got to be far enough away. So 11 on top of 32 would get me to 43. OK, you could use 43. I'm going to just pop in 50. OK, it wouldn't make any difference. You could try. Try some different values. It won't make any difference to the answer. And sigma and the mean are the same. So we get 0 0.3247 to four decimal places. So that's number two. Now, number three, I'm just picking out um, some wording here. At least 31.8. Now, from what we looked at uh, with the binomial distribution, this certainly had some connotations with it. So we had to be very careful with what probabilities we're finding. So at least 31.8 would be written like that. Okay, But remember that the probability of x being equal to 31.8 is zero. So this is actually precisely the same probability as finding greater than 31.8. OK, so for normal distribution, that won't make any difference. So there's 32, 31.8. 
So my lower value in the normal CD will be 31.8. My upper value, 50 again. So 0.5721 to four decimal places there. Which makes sense because we've just got, I've shaded over 50% of my diagram. Right, last one. So between 29.5 and 34 kilos. So, diagram. There's 32. 29.5 and 34. So it's probably going to be quite proportionate. This. Okay. So, this is the same as finding the property of uh, x being between the 29.5 and the 34. So on the normal CD, I can put the lower in as 29.5, the upper in as 34. Everything else is the same. And I get 0.9540 uh, to 4 decimal places. OK? And so that is how we can find probabilities quickly using our normal CD calculator, uh, calculator function. So as I said, I didn't show you how to convert all of these into Z values as we did in the previous couple of videos, uh, because in the exam, you will just be expected to use your calculator straight off the bat with these. But when we get on to inverse norms uh, and working backwards, we'll need to bring the formula back in.